Hello. Uh, in the previous lectures, we were talking about uh, main memory systems, right? And before that, we had covered the uh, input output systems. Before that, we had covered the what do you say, the micro architecture or implementation of a processor. And then uh, before that, the instruction sets and the regular basic architecture of a processor, right? Now, the next we move on to the concept of a cache memory, right? So, what is cache memory? Uh, cache memory is uh, smaller memory compared to main memory, uh, but it is much faster than main memory and it is, uh, it will be in the same chip as the processor, right? Main memory, uh, uh, mostly RAM and some portion of ROM, uh, it is not in the same chip as a processor, it is external, right? So, and it is treated as an external uh, thing only. But uh, cache memory is a part of uh, our process. It's not a part of the processor, but it is a part of the chip in which the processor it is there. So, proximity is there. Uh, it is much faster and uh, it is smaller compared to the main memory. The other thing is that it is its implementation is using static RAM, okay, SRAM. And the same SRAM is used for implementing the registers in the CPU also. So uh, how does a uh, how does this cache work? It is like what the processor directly access cache, right? So whatever data the processor wants, it's directly access the cache. If whatever the processor is looking for is not there, then only the processor will look for it in the main memory, right? So cache is the immediate. Uh, location where the processor checks for whatever data it wants and uh, if, if the processor is looking for something in the cache and if it gets it it is called a hit otherwise it is called a miss now let's move on to the topics okay so uh, when we are talking about cache uh, cache memory uh, the major feature or the major uh, reason behind using the cache memory is uh, the concept called as temporal locality and spatial locality okay so what does temporal locality means it means that uh, suppose we are using a certain data the chances of accessing that same data again and again is the same uh, it's not the same it's it's high that is if you are uh, for example you are in a loop you are in a for loop and uh, you are using a, a variable c to keep the count okay so the chances of you coming back or the processor coming back and accessing that value c is very high uh, so that is the concept of temporal locality that is uh, um, again the usage of the same data again and again right the concept of spatial locality is that when uh, you are accessing a certain word of data then the chances of accessing uh, the data which is located near to it suppose you are accessing a memory location uh, 0 5 0 then uh, the, the chances of you or the processor accessing uh, some data in 0 5 1 or 0 5 2 is very high very likely so this uh, concept of spatial locality and the concept of temporal locality these two uh, are one of the main reasons why cache memory is designed and used because so we know uh, and this has been empirically proven uh, by um, running programs by analyzing algorithms and programs so with this with, the, with these two properties we know that okay certain data will be accessed again and again and uh, certain blocks of data will be ag used again and again. So that is why we are actually implementing uh, cache memory. Okay, while we are in the concept of uh, spatial locality, let's, let's talk about cache block. Okay, cache block or block in general. So uh, the concept of a block is that, uh, okay, first of all, let's begin from a word, right? Uh, sorry, from a byte. 8 bits of data is a byte and you group together certain number of bytes of data 
uh, to call as a word for example in a mips 32 processor the word size is 4 bytes or 32 bits so that is a word so uh, considering the concept of spatial locality what does it mean that is if i am using a certain word of data then i am highly likely to use the uh, uh, words of data which are uh, stored near to the ac uh, data word of data that is that i accessed so uh, considering that concept what we do is we divide the memory into certain blocks blocks of data right certain blocks uh, it uh, it is divided into blocks in the main memory also cache memory is also divided into blocks so the main memory blocks are called main memory blocks and the blocks in the cache memory are called cache blocks and uh, b is a parameter uh, it is the block size okay b is called block size and what is a block size block size is the number of words in a block for example i am taking block size b as 4 right that what what does it mean it means that uh, in each block in the cache memory or in the main memory for each block in the memory uh, there will be four words right so you can just imagine that uh, the memory is divided into blocks any memory whether it is main memory or cache memory and mind you the size of the block in the main memory and the size of the block in the cache memory should be the same because we are taking blocks of data from the main memory and putting it into cache memory right so it should match so that is a concept of block and uh, if c is uh, the total capacity of a cache and b is the number of blocks in a cache then number of blocks in a cache is equal to the capacity by divided by the size of one block right so total capacity by size of one block gives total number of blocks okay now uh, the next next uh, concept that uh, we should we will be going into is called that the set right set and uh, this concept of set is there only in the uh, cache there is no concept of set in main memory so what is a set a set is uh, a number of blocks grouped together in the cache memory we said uh, we call a block as say uh, two or four uh, words of memory right we group so the consequent uh, or contiguous uh, blocks of memory uh, into the in the cache memory as sets for suppose uh, we take a block of size four words then we take four blocks as one set okay so this is just uh, grouping we'll uh, see examples of all these uh, in later portions now i'm just uh, setting the preliminaries so uh, first of all we have the cache memory then uh, then we have the concept of blocks this block size small b and number of blocks in the cache memory which is capital b and then we have sets uh, it is denoted by capital s so the cache is divided into uh, certain number of sets and within each set there will be certain uh, blocks of uh, words or certain blocks and this is uniform suppose if i am uh, dividing uh, if if i am taking the set as uh, i am dividing the let's say the whole cache into four sets then the number of blocks within the within each set will be the same right now uh, it is depending on this number of sets and uh, number of sets uh, within a cache memory that we have different types of mapping okay so i hope you understood what a set is a set is just uh, one the one one division the primary division of a uh, cache memory that is every cache memory 
will be divided into s number of sets okay every cache memory will be divided into s number of sets and uh, this uh, and this each cache will contain n number of blocks okay and each block will contain small b number of words okay the concept of mapping what is mapping mapping is uh, see uh, we have to when we want some data which is not there in the cache we want to we have to take the data from the main memory and put it in the cache right but we cannot just put it anywhere we have to find it find that uh, data in the cache otherwise we cannot use it right so uh, this concept of mapping is how we uh, or rather where we put the put a certain data taken from a certain memory location in the main memory and where we put it in the cache memory this relation or this process of taking some data from the main memory and putting it in the cache memory it is called mapping so depending on the number of sets uh, in a, uh, what do you say in a cache there can be three types of uh, mapping the first one is called as a direct mapping the second one is known as n way set associative mapping or just in general set to associative mapping and the third one is a fully associative mapping right so once more depending on the type of mapping there can be three types of mapping sorry depending on the type uh, number of sets sorry depending on the number of sets there can be three types of mapping that is direct direct mapping two set associative mapping and three fully associative mapping right so what is direct mapping direct mapping happens when the number of sets equal to number of blocks so what does it mean when you say number of sets equal to number of blocks it means there will be one block per set right we are saying initially we are dividing the whole cache memory into certain number of sets and then we are dividing uh, the sets into certain number of blocks right and we say set, assume that there will be n uh, blocks in each set and there will be b blocks in the whole cache memory so if you are taking uh, n as one that is for each within each set there will be only one block then number of total number of sets will be equal to total number of blocks that condition or that type of mapping is called as a direct mapping if we take a uh, number of set equal to 1 that is if we consider the whole cache memory to be one uh, one set then that concept that type of mapping is called as a fully associative mapping what if we take uh, n to be some uh, other number some something in between this that is uh, each set is having more than one block and uh, there will be more than one set in the whole cache then that is called as a set associative mapping that is there will be n blocks per set and there will be total number of s equal to b by n um, sets in the whole cache memory it is called an n way set associative mapping or set associative mapping so direct mapping uh, set associative mapping and fully associative mapping so what is the condition in direct mapping number of blocks will be equal to number of sets that mean that means there will be only one block per set at this point uh, there is no distinction between a block and a set it is uh, sort of the same thing right and uh, in fully associative mapping what is happening uh, s equal to 1 that is there is only one set or rather the whole cache memory is considered to be one uh, one set that means total number of blocks equal to total number of blocks in a set n equal to b that is a condition and this is a general thing set associative n way set associative mapping is the uh, general case that is s equal to b b by n sorry s equal to b by n 
that is there will be a certain number of set uh, sets which is less than b and greater than 1 okay the number of sets will be greater than 1 but less than b and uh, there will be certain number of uh, blocks in a set there will be certain number of blocks in a set right if we uh, substitute the value of n as b we will get uh, what set uh, fully associative mapping and uh, if, if we substitute the value of n as 1 then we will get direct mapping so n n way associative is the uh, n way set associative mapping is the general case and direct mapping and fully associative mapping are certain extreme uh, conditions of the uh, set associative mapping okay now uh, moving forward uh, for this whole lecture regarding mapping uh, we will be considering a 32 bit MIPS processor that is it will be having 32 bit addresses and 32 bit words that is 4 byte words okay and each memory location in the main memory will be having uh, <coughs> sorry will be having uh, 1 byte uh, as an ad location okay that is each address will be pointing to one byte that is byte addressing but when we are using word addressing uh, then uh, we will be considering words that is four byte uh, locations so uh, yeah memory is byte addressable but word uh, each word is four bytes then we will be using then there will be two to the power of 30 words and we will be and in the examples below we will be using uh, word aligned memories uh, okay and to begin with we will be you starting with one word block size that is small b equal to one that means in each block of memory in the main memory and in the cache memory we will be using uh, one word per block okay usually it is not like that there will be more number of words per block but for the purpose of simplicity and understanding we will be using only one word per block okay uh, now um, in the next lecture onwards we will start with the different types of mapping in detail thank you